Hey, dear ladies and gentlemen, Juan Romero here from Switch Watch. I've got La Mulana 1 and 2 Nintendo Switch review here. I want to thank Jason for putting the script together. I've played part one, he's played one and two. Let's get into it then. It's a punishing series that reminds us of the days of old. And it is precisely this old school gameplay that brings La Mulana and its sequel into the limelight of the gaming world. It is a series that took risks with its difficulty and gameplay, but in the end, it works out so well and provides a challenge unlike many others in the modern age. And thankfully, the Switch has received both games at once. You'll be able to burn your masochistic desire at home or on the go, but how do these games fare? Are they worth your hard earned cash and time let's find out and check out the story now since we're reviewing both games at once we will do our best to combine the elements of both games when it comes to the story la mulana one and two do a superb job of building a humongous world of lore characters and secrets and it is amazing the amount of time that went into both games when it comes to world building it absolutely pays off we constantly found ourselves investing in all of the random side stories it was really cool to meet most of the random characters spread throughout the world and both games are archaeologists trying to discover something whether it be a secret treasure of life or what happened to your father now in mulana one you play as a renowned archaeologist and you have been tasked with unraveling the secrets of la mulana and getting your hands on a very prized treasure. In La Mulana 2, you play as Lumisa, the daughter of Lemeza Kuzugi, and your goal is to find your missing father. Both games are strongly about searching through every nook and cranny you can find. They're deeply complicated stories that expect you to read, read, and then read some more. There are tons of notes about places, enemies, races, history, and more to help you dive deeper into its world. Now this can be damning at times because ignoring notes or talks with people you meet can result in getting lost within its story. Sometimes the biggest clue is in the smallest word and if you blaze through the text it's quite easy to lose your way since the world and stages are quite huge and intricately interconnected. Wandering around and not knowing what you can do you can waste a lot of your precious time. With that said please read text and make some notes if you can. Thankfully, the Switch can take screenshots with the press of a button, so you can also make use of that. And it is definitely a tip that we suggest. It truly is a massive, complicated world, but in a good way. It's one of the reasons the La Mulana series shines, because although looks can be deceivingly simple here, this is an incredibly deep game. La Mulana 1 and 2 are a lot of things. It is a 2D action adventure. It's a platformer, it's a Metroidvania, and a puzzle game and somehow La Mulana masterfully executes all of these areas and both games bring it all together to form a truly amazing game series. Both games start off simple enough. They do a great job coaching you in a handful of ways. You'll be presented with barrels in front of you so you need to learn how to get past them. You'll talk to various people in the village and they'll tell you where you need to go and what needs to be done. And you also learn quickly things you cannot do yet. So you decide to dive into a new world and face the challenge ahead. And boy, are they challenging. After the La Mulana games let go of your hand, you're on your own. You need to figure out how you unlock doors and chests and you have to learn the hard way where you shouldn't go. And your encounters with enemies are absolutely a trial by fire experience. The amount of times you will hit traps may be discouraging at first, especially if you hit the same trap multiple times. But this is part of the grind. This is how La Mulana and its sequel prepare you for the intensity that lies ahead. So if you don't like challenges, this may not be for you. As I mentioned in the story section, you need to search around and find clues. And this is the adventure part of the game that we really enjoy. It's essentially a puzzle solving part of the game that will often take place throughout. Learning the meaning of symbols will eventually become commonplace and how to open doors and chests will be a bit more routine at first however all of that can be a little bit stressful particularly the apps you find and buy that help you collect more data and information but it is what makes the game so good you dive into this insanely complicated labyrinth of sorts with no idea what you're doing for some it may take minutes but for others it may take a few hours to adjust to the level the game expects you to take 
out your first major boss. And boy, the boss fights are definitely awesome. Each boss fight is pretty epic. There are 10 guardians in each game, so 20 in all, and all of them are giant in scale and presence. But like most things in the Milana games, there is a very particular rhythm to every boss fight. To prepare for these guardians, the Milana series does an excellent job sprinkling around its various maps, a series of many mini bosses that prepare your timing and reflexes for those upcoming guardians. This is the type of intentional push that the Milana series does not always get credit for. Although it's not holding your hand anymore after the first 10 or 15 minutes, it still encourages exploration enough where you find yourself confronted by bigger than average enemies that will immediately test your current abilities. Conquering each one of these mini bosses feels absolutely great and usually they reward you with some kind of item or access to a new area. Now the Metroidvania side of things is what I enjoy or what we enjoyed about La Mulana and its sequel the most. Early in the games, if you pay attention, you'll receive the Holy Grail, which allows you to fast travel to any save point you find throughout the game. And as you progress, every new area will eventually earn you an item that can be used somewhere in a previous area. For completionists, this will set up the right triggers and make the game so much bigger than simply clearing the main route and story. The only thing that we disliked about La Mulana is the jumping, unfortunately. Since it's a part platformer, there are many times where you are expected to make some tight jumps. However, La Mulana is very strict in its jumping. If you are moving, then you can adjust your jump and movement while in the air, similar to the Super Mario titles. But if you're standing still and jump, you're not able to move until the apex of the jump and this can make certain platforming very frustrating. And even after you get used to this style of jump, it does not take away that frustration of being punished harshly for not having any momentum in your jump. Especially when you fall by mistake or through a trap and cannot change direction at all. It's just a straight fall. And since this is a major part of the game, it does make things a little bit more difficult in a seemingly unfair way. Thankfully, checkpoints and saves are spread around well, so poor deaths from bad jumps shouldn't affect you too much, but it is something to note if you're looking to buy this game. Just remember to get that holy grail as soon as you can, because otherwise you need to save manually each and every time, so you've been warned. In terms of the audio, the music throughout La Mulana games is fantastic. Each new area feels unique and the music is a big reason for that. The way the game set the tone for every environment should be applauded because we never felt that it was out of place. The sound effects are also quite effective and give the world a lot more substance. And even how each monster has different sounds and how they differentiate the different monsters with their growls is very impressive indeed. And in Zelda-like fashion, discovering new items and opening treasure rewards you with such a pleasant jingle. It makes that discovery something truly longed for throughout the game. In terms of visuals and performance, La Mulana and La Mulana 2 have a smooth bit-type graphics akin to games from the Super Nintendo. Both games even have sidebars to squeeze the screen down to a more old-school feel, which was designed to imitate the look and feel of MSX games. If you've played Momodora, then you'll know what I'm talking about, and although we would have preferred a wider screen, we do appreciate the aesthetic and desire to create an old-school feeling game for the modern age. The graphics though, they do look nice too, especially the character and boss sprites. Bosses almost take up the entire screen and they do look really good. Characters you meet throughout the game will be displayed with still visuals and the artwork used for these is serviceable. There were no performance issues we wouldn't expect there to be and both games run smoothly, look great in the process. Loading can take a little bit of time when traversing between worlds but is nothing to be upset about. In terms of value then, as of writing, you can buy the games individually and digitally on the eShop for $14.99 or $13.49 in the UK. And for part two, you're looking at 25 bucks or $22.49 in the UK. I would say that part one is probably quite expensive considering how old the game is, but part two is definitely more worth your money. 
I would suggest if you can buy the physical version with both games together in one package, then that would be the one to go for. And I'll put some Amazon links in the description and in the pinned comment so you can hopefully purchase those. Unfortunately, when I last looked, they were sold out in quite a few places, so you'll need to be quick on this. In terms of hours for the main story in part one, you're looking at around 12 to 14 hours, and for completionists, you can get over 50 hours quite easily here. And for La Milana 2, to complete the main story, you're looking at a massive 50 odd hours, and for completionists, easily over 80 hours. So you do definitely get a lot of game for your money here. Overall then, La Milana 1 and 2 are very good games that provide so much gameplay and a lot of healthy challenges. It may take some getting used to the controls at first, particularly the jumping, but once you get the hang and learn the rhythms of the enemies and bosses, you'll be exploring and excavating like a true archaeologist in no time. Although the price may seem a little bit intimidating, both games do provide a ton of bang for your buck, and especially for the hours that it's going to take you to finish. And it may not be everyone's cup of tea. For those that love a bit of punishment in their video games, look no further than La Mulana 1 and 2. An 8.5 out of 10 ladies and gentlemen thank you so much if you're still here then you're still supporting we really do appreciate it and all that we ask is if you did enjoy this video then why not leave us a thumbs up if you didn't enjoy it then you've got a thumbs down option which we hope you don't have to use and of course leave us a comment in the comment section let us know if you've ever played la milana before and what you think of these games and if it's a first for you whether you're thinking of picking this one up if you want to join us on discord to discuss anything gaming we'll leave the link in the description and of course lastly if you're a new watcher why not consider subscribing to our channel for reviews like this we get involved in plenty of features lists and also our bargains and physical series that go live every sunday and monday you do not want to miss those so make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell notification thank you so much to jason who put this script together for us we really do appreciate that and if you want to check out the written version of it then head on over to www.switchwatch.co.uk and show some love for our wonderful writers over there take care everyone and we'll see you again very soon on the next one